Good morning, everybody. Happy Monday. Um, yes, I'm sitting on my bed right now because my phone is plugged in and I just woke up literally about a half an hour ago. As you guys saw, this is Charity. Good morning, Charity. Um, I wanted to come on live. Happy Monday. I wanted to do this yesterday with my final thoughts about Universal Orlando, but... I was so tired. I just passed out last night. I literally got home and I stripped down in my pajamas before dinner even and just passed out. So I was that exhausted. As you guys know, I'm I'm a huge Disney girl and which I I'm I really am a Disney girl through and through. Um, but Universal sometimes you have to go onto property and you have to experience everything before and I because I feel more comfortable then with the updates and everything you guys know how much I'm on Disney property to give you guys updates with how fast everything changes and blah 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 all right so let's just get into the thick of things instead of me just jabbering away <clears throat> and I apologize I'm just so tired my throat is bothersome um, just from screaming my head off I've realized that once you have children or not even if you had kids but once you get older um, the coasters or the virtual reality, the 3D, um, is a little intense for some people at Universal Orlando. Um, the park is great. It's not a huge park. I would recommend, and I did this a lot before the pandemic, when people would call, especially with their teenagers, graduation presents. Universal is a huge graduation present. Um destination for our high school graduates uh, so the parents call up and they want to do something and we would always pair together the land sea vacation um, so you would do two nights at Universal and then we would do a three night cruise either out of Tampa or Port Canaveral which always you guys always had a fantastic time there and as soon as we're able to do that combination again I'm definitely going to blast it up and probably do one I well my son graduates this year and we're going to Mexico but uh, just so that you have that. I know to Oliver. I know. Hey, at least I washed my face and brushed my teeth. I'm up. I'm up. This is what I'm wearing today. You're not getting me in anything better than this. I got leggings on. I I'm ready to work. I've already got a ton of emails in my inbox from this weekend. But uh, we'll get through it. Um, so let me just head back to Universal. I'm going to say the number one thing for Universal Orlando, for me, in my opinion is the Harry Potter experience in both lands. So if you're a huge Harry Potter fan, um, or not even a Harry Potter fan, you just can appreciate the craftsmanship of this, um, of the book, of the movies, and then now you want an immersive experience, this is the place. It is fantastic. They've done a fantastic job. Um, even like, I really kind of don't recommend under 10 years old for anything universal, not to say there's not something for them. Uh, there is a, a play a side in universal as well as islands of adventure. So there's two parks there. Uh, good morning, Sherry. Um, and, uh, you know, you've got this whole, uh, Dr. Seuss area, which is awesome. And for my Disney people, it reminds me a lot of uh, how Toontown used to be, but better. It's awesome. They didn't this year because of COVID have the, it's like that huge cotton candy um, thing that I did a couple of years ago with Jen and Aaron. Um, I did go looking for it, but just the, the immersive experience in a small area for the kids, it's fantastic. And then to take them back to like E.T. and the whole Toontown of Woody Woodpecker and all of that, um, that was really nice. Um, and, and it was a lot bigger than Toontown in Disney and gave them a lot more ride hands-on experiences. So I thought they did kids very well. Hey, Penny. Um, so yeah, there are stuff for little kids to do for sure. I just really recommend if you want to do a full universal stay, um, three nights, I'm going to say for the three park, park to park, um, pass. Um, I really am going to recommend that. So three to four nights, I think is all you're going to really need. Um, both parks offer a ton of fun stuff, but again, 
we need, when we book this trip for you, we need to have a park to park pass. And um, because this gives you the full immersive Harry Potter experience. And I'm not a big Harry Potter fan. I'm going to start off just with that. I didn't read any of the books. My 13-year-old um, daughter did. Um, she read some of them, and we watched some of the movies. But it's not like it was a top-of-the-list type thing. But when she was able to go and experience hands-on on this immersive magic wand, getting picked, cloak, ride, castle, food, whole land experience... It made her really excited about what she wants to do for a career now, which ultimately will be working for Disney, fingers crossed. But she wants to go to SCAD and do graphic, um, the art design where you do the computer graphics and stuff because of that experience that she had at um, in the Harry Potter area. She just she loved all of the magic that was created there and, of course, within Disney, too. Um so it really sets off a child's iman imagination and puts them and makes them feel like they're part of everything. I love that. I love that. Okay. So if I'm if I'm staying too long on one thing, tell me to move on. Um, the rides are fantastic. Um, Jurassic Park area, this Jurassic World area, um, it has a new coaster that's going to be coming out. They were testing it. Um, Hagrid's, Hagrid's, the motorcycle one kept breaking down every morning and that line has no express pass. So you have to get there right away, uh, in the morning. Um, love Harry Potter. Want to go so bad, but my 10 year old daughter doesn't want to go boo. You know what? If she, if she likes roller coasters, awesome. If she doesn't, then I would say just wait another year. But I would tell her when she gets there, she's going to be pleasantly surprised. It's different. My daughter was super apprehensive as well. Um, entice her with the butterbeer slushy is awesome. Um, it kind of reminds me like at Gaston's Pub, how you get the Lufu brew. It's a little bit like that. Um, so that it's a lot of fun. And just everything is a little bit like stepped up um, in that specific area um, as being immersed into something. So I like that whole cosplay thing. If your kid is into that, um, this is like legitimately something that they would want to be a part of. Kids were head to toe in full things. It was really sweet. Any ride that is not slow like small world. Well, I mean, there is, yeah. Okay. So then because, and here's, and here's a good point on that. Okay. Um, if, like a lot of the rides are consistently the same. Like it's this virtual thing and you're in a car having this and with the 3D glasses to try to put you into the movie. Okay. But when you have ride after ride after ride after ride like that, my whole brain is off. Like I'm like, my brain is like juggling back and forth and I can't get straight. Um, the Hulk is pretty sweet. They have that rip ride rocket thing. That is really cool. Um, so they do have coasters there. Um, Hagrid's um, is a coaster as well. And then the one in Jurassic Park will come out. So they really have like four main coasters that um, are there. And everything else is like this virtual immersive experience. So if you have issues with like visual things, this is not the park for you. For sure. Yeah, so she's into cosplay. Listen, she don't have to go on the rides. And I know you're like, oh, why would I do that? And I go on the rides. But, huh, Aaron, I love you on that. Um, yeah, and, and you don't have to. There's so much. Like, she could go. There's this place that you can go into. And <clears throat> it's like oh, the wand shop. And it's an experience where the, the I call them cast members, whatever, that's there. Um, does this whole presentation show where somebody gets picked and then like it's this whole wand picking you experience thing. Shelby was able to do this a few years ago. It was really sweet. And then um, you buy her wand. Now this is the interactive wand that is there, but it's cool that it actually gets to pick you. And then, um, you know, you can go around. There's so many places around the land area that she can do magic and there are people there to help. And there's like this like piece of paper that tells you what to say and what to do. And it's just the, the dining experiences, the stores, like you can go into. Did you know there's a travel agency there? Oh, yeah, I stopped and grabbed a picture. 
So it was just, it's really cool to be able to, you could literally spend hours there. Uh, the restaurants, there's this three broomsticks place on uh, in Hogwarts, but then if you go to Diagon Alley, a side that's over in Universal, there is, um, uh, we had breakfast there. Uh, the uh, cauldron, something like that. Aaron helped me with the name of that where we had breakfast. Um, but there's great, they have the fish and chips. They keep it very authentic. Um, like for exact, if you need a bottle of water, instead of a bottle of water, they call it gully water and they put it in a cool bottle like this. Um, they've got like the frogs and the train. You go one way, it's one story. You go the other way back. So the train goes in between Islands of Adventure and Universal Studios between the Diagon Alley and, um, uh, you know, where Harry Potter stuff is over there with the castle. Anyways, three broomsticks and leaky cauldron. Thank you. So, <laughs> Oh, trying to keep this all in my brain. Um, and I was so tired yesterday now just to try to remember it all. But um, it stays pretty consistent. Um, they upgraded a lot, but it, it really is a fantastic immersive experience. I think they did a wonderful job. Um, I love to, and I really want to point this out for anybody who's watching, um, for the guys. Are you ready for this? If you're a dude... And do you guys remember The Simpsons? And when that came out, it was like the biggest thing ever. I mean, Moe's Tavern. We want Duff Beer because it's Duff Man and all that kind of stuff. And watching that, if you are an 80s, 90s kid that watched that, um, the whole Springfield Simpsons land area is right up your alley. You can go into Moe's. You can go get your, your um, squishy slushy. Um, you can get the Duff beer. Um, they even have like the, um, mugs for you that you can purchase and take home. Um, they've got the donuts there, the cups there, like all that stuff. And I'll post all those pictures for you guys, but it's really nostalgic, which is really cool. Um, I love the fact of, um, how Hollywood studios used to be where you can walk down the streets and you're immersed into like a, like a movie set. Uh, so like pretty woman with the Beverly Wilshire or whatever hotel, um, was there. And I'm like, you know, that was cool. I had to get a picture in front of that one with the whole Rodeo, Rodeo Drive thing and the Beverly Hills sign and all that kind of stuff. And the Hollywood sign was over on the side. So that was really cool. I was able to have that experience, even though I was there in live, real life person when I went to Disneyland. Of course, I had to do that whole pretty woman thing. Um, I wanted to see where the what um, store they kicked her out of. That was pretty cool. So just for like, you know, for, uh, for our age, um, it's also Mardi Gras, which is really cool. Uh, because of COVID, the floats aren't actually moving. Uh, they're stationary, but they're still throwing beads and they're still doing music and they're still having a blast. So there's really, it's really great. Like they have this like a uh, whole thing of getting people hyped up to be able to just walk down the road. I love the restaurants and just the old Walgreens that's there. And let me tell you what, every time I get off the Transformers ride, and I've only been to Universal like I think five times uh, within the, like once a year, I kind of go just to see what's updated. Like I said, I'm a Disney person. I'm not really a Universal person, but I do appreciate what they have there. And um, the Transformer ride gets me in tears every time. I'm like, Optimus? Well, let's roll out like, <laughs> like, and every time the Decepticons come around, I'm like, you know, flicking them off and wanting <laughs> to fight them. So, um, yeah, you could Penny, that might be a really good idea just because there's, there's so much to do. And the Jimmy Fallon ride is pretty hilarious. You know, he's kind of a weirdo, but, um, there's, mm -hmm. there is just a lot to do, um, there as a grown up. I think they've got. Uh, right now, they also have, like, what's like their food and wine. It's nothing like Epcot, but they have experiences of little huts that are put out from all around the world, which is pretty sweet um, over on the Universal side. So, um, yeah. And then I just want to go into the water park side really quick. Um, I only will put my clients, unless if you specifically request and you're on a tight budget, to stay at... Um, the lowest category resort is kind of like their high moderate. 
Uh, but the pricing's not that bad. It's very like mm -hmm. low moderate to Disney uh, pricing. If you want to say like Caribbean beach pricing, but at staying at the Polynesian, which is the Royal Pacific is where um, I stayed at. The room is very clean, very nice. They have four towers. The pool is fantastic. Boat transportation direct to the parks and city walk. It's great. But here's the perk. And this is why I want you guys to stay there. Their express pass is like the fast pass, but you have to purchase it. Okay. And on top of that, it literally is for every single ride. Okay. So you, you get to go, like, if you're literally have like one or two day, like I would do a two day park to park pass with the express pass. The express pass itself is like an extra couple hundred bucks. Okay. But if you stay and, and it ended up being cheaper this way for us to stay at a higher category hotel so that we got a free express pass with our stay, which is pretty sweet. Um, I also do want to say Universal does take Disney on the hotel side of things. Like the resort that we stayed, and I've stayed at almost all the hotels except for Ed, um, Adventura or whatever, which is the like super high tech one that's the cheapest one that they have, um, and the Cabana Bay, which I really want to stay there. But again, I don't want to, it, the pricing is fantastic and they have fantastic uh, family suites there. Oh my God. The whole retro like 1950s, like look of it is fantastic. They have a bowling alley in it. Food court is great. Everything's great. Lazy river. You don't even have to leave your damn hotel. It's fantastic. But again, you have to pay extra for that express pass when you get it free. My favorite hotel there is the hard rock. The pool is awesome. The location is perfect. I mean, everything about that resort with the rooms, you could do a rock star room, um, especially if you have kids like that tween age that want to do Universal for the first time. That is definitely the resort to go to. Um, I'm going to grab some pictures from the girls because I was not able to tour it this time, but I was, I stayed in this before um, and with Shelves and her friends and they did, they have a stage in this room um, with karaoke machine and it's just, it's so cool. And you're like, oh my God, how much does that cost? Actually, it's not that bad. The price is not that bad. So I know I didn't want to stay on here that long, but um, if you guys have any questions, the last thing I want to do is spend that kind of money and have a cranky brat ruin my visit. <laughs> I'm not going to deny those words, um, but it's also, um, it's okay to leave your kids and go on vacation <laughs> as a grown up. I'm just saying, honey. Um, so yeah, and, and, and going to a theme park is just fine too. I say it all the time for food and wine festival. I mean, I don't want to take, I'm at that age now where my kids are almost grown. Like Shelby's going into high school. She's my last one here. And my other two are leaving the house. You know, Tessa's already gone. Cody graduates this year and is off to the military and then college. And then, um, yeah, and then it's just Shelby. And Mike and I love spending time together again like before we were married so it's just really nice but this is a great thing and mike just told me yesterday paula stop messaging me right now um she wants to go to universal she's telling me um mike just told me last night we got in bed and he said you know i think we just need a night of course he meant disney but because he doesn't do roller coasters he'll do disney coasters um, but he won't do anything big, big anymore. We used to go all the time, but not anymore. Um, and he's been to Universal before, so that's good. We both love the Transformers ride. Anyways, um, so yeah, so it's okay to go as an adult. It's a totally fine. He started late in life. Oh, yeah. What is the matter with you? I mean, whatever. I'll pray for you. Oh. Anyways, so I just wanted to shoot on and let you know I'm exhausted um, but I'm still working today. I am going to take an hour this morning right now. I'm hopping in my car and going to Green Cove Springs real quick to visit my girlfriend Paula uh, because she just had her baby on Tuesday and I want to suck the cheeks off of that child. So I'm going to go do that real quick. Okay. I'm sorry. I know I've got a bunch of messages and now both sides and emails, but I'm going out there this morning and I got to suck that baby's cheeks off. So I'm going to go do that and then come home and I'm going to email the rest of you guys um, and get to work. And I just want to end with this. Um, I literally just checked my inbox this morning and I have 42 emails of people who want to travel. I want to let you guys know this is why I have my team. 
because you guys trust me so much with your vacations and I love you so much for that. And I really want to thank you for supporting my small business. I love you guys. Thank you so much. I love that you trust me and my team, Jen, Tara, Billy, and now we grab those emails and I'm going to delegate them out to my team so that you guys can have the quickest response time. Um, because I wouldn't be able to reach out to all of you guys, but I personally will make sure that my hand is in each of them to make sure that they're taken care of appropriately. Thank you so much, Penny. I really appreciate that. I really appreciate all of you guys also referring people, um, to me and my team. Um, I, I'm just so very blessed. So, and I'm very blessed that I'm able to go and have these experiences for you guys. So you guys can figure out if this is going to be the right trip for you or not. So, um, also just want to thank you guys all. <laughs> I see there is a slew of requests coming in for last minute, all inclusive occasions, and I'm going to try my best to find the best resorts. And I know you guys are getting a little frustrated with me because I don't feel comfortable putting you guys at a resort I feel like won't meet your expectations. So I'm trying to make some phone calls to see if they can open up rooms, but if they don't have rooms to open up, we have to adjust dates. I just wanted to put that out there because there's multiple emails on like, I want to go to this resort. Well, you're over the water bungalow at the Palo Fitos at Maroma are sold out. <laughs> And they're sold out till next July because as soon as that promotion dropped that I posted a few months ago, we booked up and, um, but there still are a lot like Margaritaville is a fantastic option right now, um, in Riviera Maya. So those are open, but I'll get off of that cause we're here for uh, universal. But if you guys have any other questions, let me know. I'm going to tell you though. I really, for all of you Disney people out there that, and my campers that follow my business page here, Thursday's Cluckin show that I do on the Disney Campers family Facebook page um, is going to have a special guest um, join us, okay, hopefully with IT. <laughs> um, she is one of my dearest friends, Heather, and she has never stayed at Fort Wilderness before. The things that she encountered are different than I have ever known, and I'm giving her a platform in a in an um, uh, constructive way to inform people what had happened and what her experience was. So stay tuned for Thursday. Every Thursday, I do that uh, clicking on the front porch with April and I. We do it live on the Disney Campers Family Facebook page. And that's 8 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. So thank you guys for hopping on. Good morning. Happy Monday. And again, I'm going to go suck a baby's face off real quick. Probably take Mama some Dunkin' because I know she'll probably need it. And uh, Becca, I have the ears already in my car. I see you on here. And um, so I will give those to her. She's so cute. Becca, my girlfriend Becca, got her some Mickey Mouse ears and put... Her, the baby's name is Remington, but I'm calling him Jasper because I love that name. Anyways... <laughs> So it'll be good. You guys have a great day and we'll see you real soon. Bye.